The impossible is about to happen in a stable. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them has the light shined. This is the evening when creation stood still and held its breath. For God was doing the most unbelievable, dangerous thing. This is the evening when God embraced humanity from the inside as one of us from birth to death. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Amen, and welcome to worship.
people of faith and no faith, people of hope and no hope, people of peace and no peace. We gather with the longing to be made whole again, if just for this time here and now. We gather with a prayer, however vague and tenuous, that in spite of the absence of virgins and angels, wise men and shepherds, we might still be a witness to the birth of all love. We gather as ready as we'll ever be for this story of faith to unfold. Let us join together in singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Christmas Eve candlelight worship service. 
I'm Susan Hefner Hune, pastor of The Vine, and I'm so glad that we can gather together, that we can be connected with God, that we can be connected to each other even in this way, and that ultimately our lives would be transformed so that we can connect to the needs of the world. Welcome to this time of worship. If you are a child or if you are childlike, I invite you to gather around a little bit closer. And kids from the vine, hopefully you got your glow stick. So I want you to grab that glow stick and I want you to take a look at it. You might need to shake it a little bit. And if you want to go ahead and crack it, you can do that too. You might need your parents to help you crack it, but when you crack it, all of a sudden it becomes light. So we talk a lot about light at Christmas. Look at all the candles that we have lit on the altar back there and all the candles on the Advent wreath or even on your Advent wreath at home. And we talk about light because in the Bible, there is a passage from one of the prophets. Now prophets were these people that told us about God and about God's love and tried to get us to be aware of God's love. And one of the prophets said, people who walked around in darkness have seen a great light. I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes and get used to what it might feel like to be in darkness. It can sometimes feel a little scary. That's why sometimes we have night lights in our room. It can sometimes be a little confusing because if we tried to walk with our eyes closed, we might bump into things. So that's what the prophet said. He said, you know, sometimes we are walking around in darkness. We don't always know the best way to be friends. We don't always say the right things. We don't always take turns or share like we could or we should. But the prophet said that when Jesus came, it was like the people who had their eyes closed and were walking around in darkness could see again. They had a light shining the way, like a flashlight showing you the way when you're going somewhere in the darkness, or like a campfire in your backyard, or like this glow stick. So I want you to hold on to your glow stick during this time of worship because we're going to hold them up at the end and shine our light really bright so that the whole world can see and can know about God's love. So you hang on to that and maybe even tonight you put it by your bed and it will help you fall asleep just a little bit better. I know tonight's an exciting night, but you can have that light next to you shining in the darkness. Would you sing with me one of my favorite songs, one of my favorite Christmas carols, Away in a Manger? Let's sing that together. to each and every one of you for your generosity, your generosity over this last year and your generosity in these last few weeks. We have been able to deliver so many gifts of pajamas and books and gift cards to children at Shamrock Gardens Elementary, and we've also been able to take them to children who are living in a shelter during this season. So thank you so much for that gift and your, your gift of blankets. We've been able to collect so many blankets that will keep neighbors warm while they are staying in shelters with roof above this winter. Usually when we're gathered together in this space on Christmas Eve, we take up a Christmas Eve offering. And we are going to do that again tonight. So if you go to the link where you can give online, we are collecting a Christmas offering and that offering will go to roof above. The, the agency that is able to keep 
families keep individuals warm. It's exactly what Mary and Joseph needed in their time. They needed a place that was safe and a place that was warm. So if you would like to give online, if you just click down, you'll find a tab that says Other Giving. That gift will be then directed straight to Roof Above. Or if you want to send in a check to the church, we'll make sure that Roof Above gets that offering. Join with me in a time of prayer. O oh God, who spoke all creation into being, when you created human flesh, we betrayed you by our disobedience. When you led us out of slavery in Egypt, we doubted and defied you. Yet you chose to come among us through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lived, who walked, and who suffered on our behalf. For this great gift of steadfast hope, we give you thanks. Help us, O Lord, to keep vigil this night. Help us to watch for the signs of your coming into our midst, not in the splendid places of power, but in hearts humbled by need. Help us to believe that the darkness of cruelty and sin will never overcome the light, the mercy of Christ. Help us to endure, knowing that the evil and injustice of this world cannot prevail against your word. We ask this. In the name of Emmanuel, your word made flesh, our Savior, the light, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing together, O little town of Bethlehem.
the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, for which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us sing together a hymn that might be new. It's a beautiful hymn that comes from worship and praise hymnal. It's called Welcome to Our World.
Barbara Brown Taylor, teacher, preacher, and theologian, writes these words. For our failure to honor them, our bodies remain God's best way of getting to us to embrace the daily practice of incarnation is to walk the way of life that God opened up to us in Jesus Christ by showing us how to inhabit our flesh as fully and as faithfully as God did. Our bodies remain God's best way of getting to us. Well, now, as beautiful as that sounds and is, I just have to say that turning 46, my body has started to do all kinds of things. And I haven't been really happy with it lately. I now wear bifocals, which um, is a fun thing to get used to so that I can read up close. Uh, my body every morning when I get out of bed usually causes me to groan and sh I need to stretch a little bit or I'm not going to make it out without kind of tripping over myself. Uh, the really fun thing that has happened to my body over the last couple of years has been a tremendous amount of weight gain. I put my robe on and now my cincture on my robe is tight. My body is what it is. It's weary. My felt weary, not just my body, like the flesh and the joints and the muscles, but my brain, my emotions have been weary. Do you feel weary? It's been a heavy season. And I guess that's why the hymn, O Holy Night, has just been running through my head for the last few weeks. The weary world rejoices. Weary bodies rejoice. Our bodies are the best way that God meets us and reaches us, which is why this story, this day is so unbelievable and remarkable that God, that our God would want to come and be incarnational, incarnate, in meat, in flesh, that God would want to put on this suit and experience all that we experience, skinned knees, growing pains, goosebumps, that God would want to have such humility as to sneeze, that God's eyesight might cause problem, that God would want achy joints, that God would want to experience joy and excitement and feelings of beauty and wonder and pain and weariness and aging. The last few weeks we have pondered Mary and Joseph and their journey, which really led them into a home where we all are on this day. We're not able to gather and be here in this sanctuary. We haven't been able to for some time. Many of you are not visiting with family members. You're in your home. And so it was good that we remind ourselves that Mary and Joseph journeyed to Bethlehem. And really the translation of the story should be they, um, that they had been there for some time. So it wasn't like they just kind of burst through the door and had a baby right away. They had been there for the registration. More than likely, they were staying at a relative's house. The no room in the inn was really there was no space in the guest room. Because so many people had gathered, it was filled up. So Mary and Joseph very likely could have found themselves in the family room. Are you in the family room watching this? 
Mary and Joseph found themselves in the family room right at the doorway and that, that there would have been hours of agony and hours of struggle and hours of pain. And Joseph would have been in that state of, of not knowing what to do and having to be patient and, and not being able to help relieve Mary would have been surrounded by midwives, family members, loved ones who would have been encouraging her and reminding her of the beauty in the moment of struggle, of weariness. And then when that moment came and the cry of Jesus sounded, the weary room rejoiced. The weary father rejoiced and the weary mother rejoiced. The weary world is holding on to that hope right now. And maybe you are as well. You in your weary bodies. You in your weary souls. Your weary spirits. You are waiting for that moment to rejoice. This story, it happens again and again, and not just on Christmas Eve. Every moment, because our God is a God who is incarnational, who desires to come and be in flesh to be with you in your weariness and bring you to that space of rejoicing. It is available for you tonight, that incarnation. And it changes the way you receive Christmas. And hopefully it changes the way we receive one another because if God can be incarnational in you, then it changes the way I see you. And it changes the way we express love. And it changes the way we reach out. And it changes the way we live together. God chooses to be incarnational. To, to come into these weary bodies of ours. To experience all that you are experiencing. And to help you hear the cry of life and light. Tonight, may these weary bodies, may our weary homes, may our weary community, may the weary world rejoice for the light and life. The word made flesh has come and is dwelling among us. Thanks be to God. I invite you to find your communion elements and take those. These communion elements are gifts of God's grace. They are symbols of God being made flesh and dwelling among us. Hear this prayer. O oh God, pour out your light and your spirit on these gifts that are all over the world. Make this space and make them holy. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that when we receive them, they would become a part of us, become a part of our bodies, become a part of our souls and our faith so that we might be for the world, the enfleshment of Christ, the body of Christ, so that for those whom we meet, they would see your son. 
Make us one with Christ. Make us one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at that heavenly banquet. And now join our voices together as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. O oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till Christ appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Let us enjoy communion as Donna shares a solo and a song with us. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Take your candle and light it at this time as we sing together Silent Night and Joy to the World.
Christmas, brothers and sisters in Christ, go into this night knowing that God is coming to dwell and to help us rejoice. Go in God's grace and peace. Amen and amen.